Good morning, church. It's good to see all of you in the house this morning. Welcome to everybody who's joining us online. It's good to have you with us as well. Um, I just want to start by opening in prayer. Let's just pray that whatever it is God wants today, that he gets exactly whatever he wants. Let's pray that he gets the glory. Let's pray that he gets the honor. Let's pray, pray that his greatness is seen throughout the world. And that, um, that the world knows that he's worthy of honor and glory. So let's stand if you can and let's all pray together for this service, but also that God will simply get the glory out of everything that we do today. Let's all pray together. Father, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we honor you. We give you the glory. Lord, you are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are the Lord God Almighty, the Lord Most High, the only one deserving of worship and the only one deserving of praise, the only one deserving of our lives, the only one deserving of our sacrifice, the only wise God, the only righteous and holy God, the only God who is mighty in power, the only God who rules over the heavens and the earth, the only God who created the heavens and the earth, the only God who is all-powerful, the all, only God who knows all, the only God who sees all, the only God who is outside of time, the only God with authority, the only God who is loving and kind and gracious and merciful. You, God, are this God that we speak of, the God who keeps his covenants, the God who never breaks his promises, the God who heals, the God who redeems, the God who saves. God, we praise you and we honor you. We thank you. And Lord, we pray that you will get the glory. We pray that you will get the honor. And we pray that nothing will take away from you and you will be made the greatest in this house and in this world. We pray, Lord, that you will be honored and magnified we pray, Lord, that the world will see your greatness. We pray that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of you, the Father, O God. We pray that you will be magnified. We pray that you will be pleased with us. We pray, Lord, that you will be pleased, you will be satisfied. What we do here will be pleasing to you, Lord. And we pray, Lord, that you will have your way. If there is a word to be spoken, we pray that it will be spoken. If it is just your worship that needs to go forth, we pray that you will be worshipped in spirit and in truth. We pray, Lord, that you will be exalted. We pray, Lord, that you will be, you will be, you will be shown to the earth, Lord. Be glorified, be magnified, O oh Lord. Be the only one in our heart. Reign on the throne of our hearts today, O oh God. We magnify you and we praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 67 says, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on earth. So let the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. And all the earth, ends of the earth, shall fear him. Can we say amen to the reading of God's word? Let the people praise him. Let the people praise him. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Hallelujah. Let the world praise you, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
sing you can say hallelujah you can say God you're worthy you're say, you can say be glorified you can say be exalted you can say be lifted high let everything that have breath praise the Lord hallelujah let us lift up the name of the Lord let us just lift him up because he is God, because he reigns and because he's worthy. Because he is the king who reigns, because he is the God over all, because he is the one who is over authority over us and over this all creation. Oh, be lifted above, all, but above the other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other idols, above everything we put before you. God, be lifted high, be lifted above it all. Let we want you to be our priority, God. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, 
humble ourselves before you. For you are the great one. You are the mighty one. Who are we that you are mindful of us? God, we bow before you. We declare that you are great. We have done nothing to deserve to come before you, but it is by your grace and your mercy and your love that you allow us to be close to you. So Lord, we humble ourselves. We do not let status or money make us think we are greater than we are. We say that we are low, but you are great. We lay our crowns and worship you. He is the God. He is the one who is worthy. We're just here to give him glory. We're just here to learn about him. We're just here to hear his word. We're just here to obey him. He is the God. He is the one who reigns. It's him. It's him. It's not about us. It's him. It's him who's worthy. It's him who needs the praise. It's him who needs to get the worship. It's him. Because if we don't, someone else will. And that's on us. He is God. He is God. He is God. It doesn't matter what we have, it doesn't matter what we wear, it doesn't matter how we speak, it doesn't matter how educated we are. He is God. You are God. You are God. You are God. God.
ourselves to you whatever it is that you want let it be so God we submit ourselves to you may we not get in the way may our pride not get in the way Lord have your way you are God. just one more time sing no one greater no God, if he is God, treat him like he is God. I'm not saying be perfect, because none of us here are perfect, but if he is God, let us treat him like he is God. Let us speak to him like he is God. Let us talk about him like he is God. Let us obey him like he is God. If he is God, let him be God. Hallelujah. He is the Lord, and he reigns on high. At this time, we're going to have our pastoral prayer. I'm going to call Brother Parks, if you would come. Hallelujah. Come on, let us... Lift up the name of the Lord. Let us keep praising him. Come on, let us open our mouths and praise him. Come on, let me hear you praise him. Let heaven hear you praise him today. Let the God who raised you up this morning hear you praise him. Because he's worthy to be praised and adored. Did you know that? Do you know that? That he is the only person that is worthy and adored. I mean, worthy and adored to be praised is the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. We have got time. Come on, when we come to the house of the Lord, one reason and one purpose we come to is to lift him up, is to praise him. Yes, we come to see our bishop and our, brother, and our brothers and sisters, but we come to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, lift him up. Lift him up, everybody. Oh, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. If you want your... Uh, Jericho wall to come tumbling down just keep praising him again praise him another time praise him another time praise him another time hallelujah hallelujah to the Lamb of God you can be seated thank you Jesus 
Here I says good morning to the church. Good morning to you all. And I want to welcome our bishop in our house, the, the house this morning. I haven't seen the first lady, but um, I'm sure she might be around or somewhere. Okay, she's not well, so we're going to lift up the, the name of the Lord and her behalf this morning and the rest. Let me welcome the rest of ministers who are here in the house today. Amen. I and I uh, want to welcome um, those who are on social media. Amen. I watching us, our service this morning. You are all welcome. Amen. I and, and we, if you are, do not have a, a church to worship, keep tuning on to this church because this church is a blessing. Amen. I this church is a blessing. In the name of Jesus, where his soul is saved and soul is sanctified and soul is filled with the dawning Holy Ghost. I must commend I mean, the musician this morning, lovely, beautiful music. You know, I, I love when I hear the bass and everything rolling nicely and the lovely singing. Amen. I so put your hands together for the musicians and the singers this morning. Amen. And I also want to welcome the friends who are here this morning. By the way, let me uh, see you by lifting up your hands this morning for those of you who are here for the very first time. Let me see by lifting up, oh my God, oh my God, wonderful, wonderful. Could you please stand? Don't be afraid to stand. You know, I, I, I look across over there and I saw that young man and that young lady, they were lifting up their hands and worship the name of the Lord. Thank you so much for coming. And I trust and hope that this will not be your first Sunday or your last Sunday. But you will keep coming. Come my son, come my daughter into the house of the Lord. You are welcome. Welcome to one and all in the house of the Lord this morning. It's time to pray. I'm going to ask you kindly to uh, get up from your seat and help me pray this morning as you all lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. If you can only stand, let us all stand. Amen. We have some Jericho wall to be broken down this morning. And we're going to break it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I cannot do it. You cannot do it. But I know a man who can do it. And his name is Jesus. He dies on the cross, but he's no more there. He's sitting at his father's right hand. And he's making an intercession for you and for me. For those six bodies who are here in the house this morning. Pain. When I wake up this morning, I say to Colin, oh, I'm feeling pain. Pain over my back. My lower back, pain, and I'm sure it's not holding me alone. I'm in having this pain. But in the name of Jesus, I pray, and I felt much better this morning in the name of Jesus. And so whatever situation you might come in the house here with this morning, Jesus is able and more than able to deliver you and to set you free. For those unsaved in the house this morning, you are here and you are not yet saved. The word will be preached. Amen. And as you sit down and as you listen to the, 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 the word of Almighty God, give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ because what? Time is short. Time is short and the coming of the Lord is at hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw yourself from me, where and whether would I go when thou art the way of eternal life? Lord, I come to you this morning. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb that was slain. Here are your people standing, oh Lord God, this morning looking up to you. Oh, is the hunter and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we need a word. We need a touch. Oh God, the woman with the issue of blood says, if I but just touch the hem of his garment, then I will be made whole. God, there are sick bodies in the house this morning, but we ask you as we lift up our faith towards thee in the name of Jesus. Some, Lord, are sick or oh, with cancer, with diabetes. Lord, and you named blood pressure. Oh, and you named them this morning. But in the name of Jesus, God, there is nothing that can stand before you this morning. Lord, when you come in the house, Lord, 
Lord, lives are changed and this and this thunderstorm. Oh, Father, so we call upon you this morning that you will break chain. Break chain this morning in the name of Jesus. I pray for this church this morning. God, as we prepare to transit, oh God Almighty, as we prepare, Lord, for another man of God to come to serve us. Lord, we ask you, Lord, that there will be a change. There will be a change. Your people will be charged with the Holy Ghost. Lord, for those who do not yet know you as Lord and Savior, they will come to know you as Lord and Savior before the time of too late. God, we need, Lord God, to be filled and to be transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, we'll be more effective. Our worship and our praise will be even more effective when we all fill with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So we pray for a revival in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let it start in the house. Let it start in me. Let it start in my brothers. Let it start in my sisters. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray for the man of God who is about to come to take over this great church. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you will continue to lay your hands upon him wherever he is. In the name of Jesus and begin to prepare him, Lord, to take up this thought. Oh, God, is thought in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, oh, Lord, God, as he comes, he will come with power. He will come, Lord, anointing in the name of Jesus Christ to trample upon the wicked ones in the name of Jesus. We pray for our Bishop Brown here. Lord God, as he prepare, Lord God, himself, wherever he's going to be, we ask you right now to take him in charge in the name of Jesus. Lord God, as he humbled himself before the Almighty God, we pray for his dear wife at this time. Oh God, our dear beloved Sister Brown, Jesus, she's not in your house today because she's not feeling well in her body. But in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, come on church, believe in me. Believe with me. In the name of Jesus, we call Sister Brown by name. In the name of Jesus, and we says no weapon that form against Sister Brown. Oh Lord God, Reverend Brown will ever prosper. In the name of Jesus, and every tongue that rises against her, in judgment they shall be condemned. Lord, wherever that sickness is right now, we pint in the name of Jesus. In the direction of our house this morning, in that room wherever she is this morning, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, every principalities, every powers, every rulers of darkness, we come against you now. Get out in the name of Jesus. Sickness, I curse you. Sickness, I rebuke you. We come together as a church in one and we curse you and we destroy you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. And we say, be well. Be he well, Sister Brown. Be he well. Heaven bless you. Heaven cause his face to shine upon you. In the name of Jesus, we send Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire. In the name of Jesus, we pray for those Lord who are bereaved this morning. In the name of Jesus, remember them and still believe in Lord God. We pray that you'll give them strength in the name of Jesus. And for those, oh Lord, who have lost their loved ones, let them not weep as they that have no hope. But Lord God, they will hope in thee. We pray for our mothers, Lord God, and our fathers, Lord, who are at home. Lord, you used to come to your house and lift up your name, but sickness take all of your body. Old age take up of their body also, but we pray for them, Lord. They are listening over Zoom this morning in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, remember every one of them this morning. In the name of Jesus, will you heal their bodies this morning? In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the preacher this morning. Oh God, you know her by name and number. Lord God, within ourselves, you might think she cannot do it. But Lord God, as you speak to Moses, and Lord, as you tell Moses to go, and I will be with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you right now to touch your daughter. In the name of Jesus, anoint her from the crown of her head to the very soles of her feet. Touch every unsafe in the house this morning. Oh God, they are one of them that we come here for this morning. They are the reason why we are here. Lord God Almighty, to root up and to pull out Jesus, every stuff that's going on in their lives. Oh God, some of them are being kept, Lord God, and kept aside by the devil. Oh God, but in the name of Jesus, we lose them tonight, this morning, in the name of Jesus. We lose them and we say, Holy Ghost, take full control upon your life this morning and save them. Save them. Those who are listening, oh Lord, by the social media this morning, will you save them? Will you deliver them? Will you set them free? Bless this church again, we pray. Bless this church, God. Continue to bless the young people. Oh God, bless Christian this morning will lead out. Oh God, in such an able way this morning. You know what is going on in his life this morning. Take him in charge, Lord. A young man who loves you. Oh God, lift him up. Lift him up, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Bless us now, we pray. We tell you thanks. We tell you thanks. We tell you thanks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, let us all say, Amen. 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 Now put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. God bless you. short reflection following the theme this year Jesus says so far this year for me God has been teaching me the right perspective of him and one way he's been showing me that is that he's a shepherd some time back I watched a video with a few of my friends and there were some people in a field and they were taking um, turns attempting to call after the sheep but each person that tried they all failed. The sheep just ignored them and continued about their business. Then it was the turn of the shepherd. And as he raised his voice, calling the sheep, immediately they all responded. They came running to him. I found that amazing. And it made me think about John chapter 10. And Jesus says from verse 1 to 3, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a shepherd rather than going through the gate, makes sh surely, may sh must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognizes his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Hearing this made me think about the role of a shepherd, and I've listed um, a few things as follows. A shepherd leads a sheep, a shepherd cares for his sheep, a shepherd protects his sheep, a shepherd has more knowledge than his sheep, and in that the shepherd knows best for his sheep. Within scripture, there are many references to the body of Christ being like a flock, meaning we are the sheep. Also, King David saying in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. So acknowledging that I am a part of God's flock, it made me think about what is the relationship between a sheep and a shepherd. 
typically sheep are not the brightest of animals and are defenseless, so they will be at the mercy of their prey if left unattended. So this shows me that there is a need for a shepherd and sheep are completely independent of their shepherds for survival. <laughs> Due to this dependency, God was showing me that the rightful response towards him will be to follow his commands so I can remain safe under his covering and guidance. But a key thing for me is that the sheep recognize his voice. So for me, that will be understanding how God speaks. And I gather that through spending time in his word and in his presence, so I'm able to discern more and distinguish his voice. Because I am a sheep and Jesus is my shepherd, I have to acknowledge my need for Jesus and become poor in spirit and dying to myself daily by not trusting in my own abilities or strength to get me through and rightfully seeing myself as a sheep who is in complete dependence to his shepherd. My key role is to trust and have faith in Jesus to be guided through all circumstances because he says, cast all your cares upon him and he will take care. And knowing this releases my anxiety and stress because I know God is in control and will guide me according to his will. In verses 14 and 15, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know, I know my own sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I believe that Jesus sacrificing his life for the sheep sets him apart as the good shepherd. But he gave his life by finishing the works on the cross for our sins to create a way for us and to save us from death. And no other shepherd would do, would do the same for me and for you. So to end my um, reflection, I just want to encourage you to just make us remember that Jesus is the good shepherd and we are the sheep. And let's be rest assured in Jesus' leading and we don't have to do much but put our faith and trust in him. Thank you for listening. Thank God for Jesus, thank God for God and for the angels that look after me. I'm here to just give you an update on my mission, which we'll be finishing soon. But let me greet our bishop, Bishop Brown. Nice to see you, nice to be here, nice to be alive. I'm above and not beneath. You know, I'm not used to this mic thing, <laughs> but I'm using it, if I remember. Because <laughs> right now my memory is taking a little old of me, yeah? So, just this update, and then I'm supposed to sing, so I'll do my best. Okay, so the update is that I've been going to, on my mission to Ghana, Sierra Leone, Australia. The best of my mission was Australia, because there I saw the Aborigines, which are people like us, and it was very painful to see what they're going through. Very, very painful. You haven't seen, you have to travel to see these things. So being there, I realized that although we are here praising God and giving him thanks, there's so much suffering, so much suffering. I also went to China, and I see where they had to hide. I wasn't allowed to take photographs of the Aborigines, not much, and not much of China. But I did my best. And I'm just here to let you know that God is alive. He's here. He's present. You need to get up. You know, sometimes it's nice coming to church every Sunday, but sometimes it's nice to go out and do a little bit of mission, a little bit of evangelism. You know, even a couple of days ago, I saw some guys steal. Although I haven't been anywhere lately, 
but I saw these children in the store picking from a packet of biscuits. And I went up to them and I said, shame on you. When the security came, I said to him, it's okay. I look at them and I said, why are you doing this to me? These are all school boys, big boys. And they said, auntie, it's not me. You know, I stood there and I watched them and I said to them, you have to be so careful. So careful, it's not necessary. This crowd of them that came around me was unbelievable. So the security came back in Tesco to ask me if I'm okay. And I said, I'm fine. I said to them, go to the, sh the counter, pick as much biscuits as you want. Take it. You sure, ma? I said, yes. There was nine of them, big boys. And I'm just saying to you, there's so much out there you can do. You know, you need to, in Peckham, I go again, they ask me the same question. The girl is running, I'm not in Ghana now, I'm here. And this girl running down the road, no clothes on, and everybody let her pass. I stopped her. I said, come. I put her to me. And then the people who were selling was just looking at me as if this, is she crazy? Why would you stop her? I took her and she says to me, mommy, don't cry. Don't cry. I cried so much because she could have been my daughter. So you see, there's so much here to do. Not just coming to church and just going around, hello, brother, hello, sister. I couldn't care. I just want our souls to be saved and to be satisfied in the goodness of God. It is very hard. I know some people say, oh, I can't do the mission. I, I just got up. I just got up one day. I had a stroke on duty while I was working. And that was it. God said, it's time. And I've been traveling ever since. I tried every country I can find. The update in Sierra Leone, things are very hard, very difficult. So if I ask you for a pound, I ask you for something, I thank you because it helped. Otherwise, I have to use my own money. And I don't mean penny, I mean thousands of pounds to look after these people. But when I go, God give me the strength. The angels stay with me. I've never had an accident. I get up in the mornings, I take the children to hospital in the dark. I take them to the eye clinic. I go everywhere all alone with my stick. I don't know why I don't have it now. I'm trying not to use it, you know, just to see if I can hang on. But my time is coming to an end. When you won't see me coming to church, just pray. Amen. Just pray. Just pray. Because, you know, I'm 80 next year, so I'm moving on. I'm um, moving on, so I have, to, I have to do as much as I can. And I'm not joking. I'm, we've got to get up, do something. Don't just come here and, oh, beautiful, you look beautiful, you look nice. Do something for the Lord. There's so much out here to do. You don't have to do it for show. Go ahead and do it. When I told these boys that you're embarrassing me in the supermarket, they were shocked. Me, auntie, yes, you are. So things are here for you all to do. You understand? So it's no point we're just coming to church. And I travel the hills, the, the mountains, just to help a lot of children and to see them through. Now I'm going to sing because I'm allowed 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, gosh, this is funny. So, <laughs> so let me see if I can see and let me see if I can remember. The words of the song. Okay, so this may be my last testimony, but let me sing it for you. Okay, here we go. Just give me a little bit of time. Gosh. You know this had to happen, don't you? My children said, how can you see that phone? I don't know, but I'm, I'm doing my best. Now I forgot where it is. And it no. No. I'm going to get it. When you're rushing me, I'm coming. Remember I said this might be my last one, so don't rush me. <laughs> uh. it happen. Sorry. Uh, if I walk
in the pathway of duty. If I work till the close of the day, I shall see the great king in his beauty. When I've gone the last mile of the way, when I've gone the last mile of the way, I will rest at the close of the day for i know there are joys that await me when i've gone the last mile of the way if i were to christ to proclaim the glad story if i seek for a sheep gone astray i am sure he will show me his glory when i've gone the last mile of the I've gone the last mile of the way. I shall rest at the close of the day. For I know there are joys that await me. smile of the way I shall rest at the close of the day for I know there are joys that await me when I've gone the last smile the close of the day for I know there are joys that await me when I've gone the last mile of the way bless the Lord hallelujah Glory to God. Wonderful is he. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Sister Beverly. What a testimony. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thought I'd just support her. I was going to follow her, follow, follow and find her. That's excellent testimony, Sister Beverly, of what you're doing and what the Lord is doing in your life. for your report that you have given unto us. And we know that God is not yet finished with you. There's much more ministry in you. And we're going to believe his report. Lo, I am with you 
always, even unto the end of the age. So we pray for you that God will strengthen you. You made reference to your mind and not working 100%. So we lay our hands upon you and pray. Father, we take a few moments now just to lift up your servant before you whom you have called and you have sent, Lord God, out on the mission fields. And you have provided for her in such rich and powerful ways that she could go around the world, as it were, to bring good tidings of great joy to people in the name of Jesus Christ. And she stands before you rather feeble in body but not in mind. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your hand would be upon her to heal her right now in the name of Jesus. Every part of her body that is not functioning the way that she wanted, oh God, them to function, we pray in Jesus' name for total and complete healing in the name of Jesus. And wherever you would lead her, and whatever you would have put in her heart and her mind to do, help her to say yes to your will and yes to your way. We thank you for all the lives that she has touched in these different countries. And I just pray that they will grow up to give praise, testimony of praise and victory because of her work in the name of Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit come fresh upon this year's servant and anoint her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. And may you, Lord, bless her that she'll hear that wonderful word, well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. We commit her into your hand in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And together we say, Amen and amen. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let me greet each one of you in the house today. And um, just want to let you know that God's presence is in this place. Yes. Look how many, how many of us are in this house today. His word tells us where his people gather, two or three, he's there to bless and to do good. And there's so many of us here today. And we want to lift up his name in praise and adoration. And we want to greet those who are on social media this morning. We pray that as you tune in, you will get a blessing even through the airways. Because God is the one who gives a blessing. We continue our worship at this time as we prepare to give back a part of what the Lord has given to us. So can we have the receptacles here, please? And as they come, I'd just like to read a couple verses of Scripture. The first one is taken from Proverbs 11, verses 24 and 25. And I'm reading from the New, Inter the New Living Translation. Proverbs 11, verse 24 and 25 says, Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. And I'm just going to turn over now to 2 Corinthians 9. Verses 6 and 7, which reads, Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get, gen get a generous crop. So, mu so must each decide in your heart how much you will give. Now, we have two writers of the scripture, one in the Old Testament and one in the New Testament. And as you see, both of them are in effect 
saying the same things. They go parallel. So what the writers are actually saying here, um, they're, ex they're emphasizing the principle of generosity and the reciprocity, I can't even call my own word now, reciprocal. <laughs> They sort of go back, uh, you know, one, one, one links into another. Reciprocity. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yes? You give one, one links to the other, and it comes back. That's it. They go one hand in hand. So they do, they want, they want generous there. Yeah? You give generous, and on the other side, it comes back to you. So the two natures, they go together. And it suggests that those who give freely, and generously will ultimately receive even more in return. While those who give really stingily, you find that you will be lacking. So what the scripture is telling us that we, when we give generously, God gives us even more than we give. So let us give heartily, not grudgingly. But giving heartily and willingly, knowing that God will give the increase. Can we have the receptacles, please? And also, for those who are giving online. Can we have the church details, please? In account details, we, we have various methods of giving. And we, as you know, we have the QR code, which you can use, which are at the back of the benches. And we have our bank transfer. We have online banking. And we also have the usual envelopes. So you can choose whatever method you wish to give, that you do not lose out on your blessing. And as we give, we know that God will give back the increase. And as we know, the silver bucket is for mission. And we see a missionary as she spoke this morning, what God has been doing as she goes along. And as she says, it doesn't just, it doesn't just take a penny, thousands of pounds, because she's here as the evidence. So let's give and God will bless. Can we stand at this time, please, as we pray and give God thanks today? And then we will say our manager hallelujah father we thank you today for who you are the great king of kings and lord of lords father when we think of the one you you the one who give father god you are the one who gave the greatest gift of all in giving your son christ jesus father god to die on calvary's cross holy father to redeem us back to you and thank you, Father God, that you raised him from the dead. Mighty Father, that my Father, we will one day be with him in glory. And thank you, Father God, that he is today at your right hand, pleading and making decisions for us. But also, Father, your Holy Spirit, your comforter, you've given to us, which is with us, to guide us, to keep us, to protect us, to lead us. And Father God, we thank you, Father, for all these gifts, Father, you've given to us. And Lord, we want to thank you also for the material, oh Father God, substance that you've given to us. And as we've come at this time, Father, give back a part of this material substance, Father. We pray you bless each giver, Lord. I pray, my God, we bless Father God. The houses. Wherever they've stored their stuff, Father God, it will be increased. There may be others this morning who are not able to give, Father God. But Lord, you understand and you know. So I pray to bless them likewise, Father God, and raise them up. Make it possible for them, Father, that in due, in due time, Father, they too will be able to contribute. Continue to bless and keep them, Father. Bless each one of us while we pray. And continue let your Holy Spirit be with us as we tell you thanks in no other name but in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we're going to say a mantra before we give. Lift up our seats. 
Father, this is my seed. As I give it to you, I expect harvest. It may not come back in monetary form, but however you bless me, I will be satisfied. Can we say that however a bit again? However you bless me, I will be satisfied. Praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Sing what a mighty. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve.
Praise the Lord. Is he reigning? Does he reign? Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord God Almighty reigns. What a mighty God we serve. As the choir is just getting ready, I'm quick, 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 quick testimony. About a year ago, I was getting a bit fed up, my job. And I said, okay, I need to do something else. And I sent my CV out and I didn't expect much to go on. And I got a new boss in the middle of the year and we had a conversation. And I said to him, by the end of next year, that's this year, I don't want to be at the BBC. I told him that. And I said, I need something else. Tomorrow I start a new job. I'm going to ask you to pray for me. It's a big thing because I'm a big old man starting a new adventure. It's a whole big change. But God is good. God is so good. And where I didn't think things were going to happen, what I didn't expect to happen, God just does stuff. And you know I was going to have that operation and the company that I, was going, that I was being interviewed by, I said, look, I've got this operation due and supposing you give me the job, what, am I, what are you going to do if my operation's in January? They said, we'll wait. And they waited. And they waited. And tomorrow they get me. But God is good. And we're going to sing today and I want you to join with us. The song says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name because he is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endures to all generations. Ready?
Praise your name, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Bless your name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us receive the word of the Lord from our sister Devisha. Let us stand for the reading. Let us stand for the reading of the word. Amen, amen, amen. in 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 1 to 11. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say, peace and safety, the sudden destruction comes up upon them as a labor pains upon a pregnant woman. And they shall not escape but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us, who are the day of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Here ends the reading of God's word. Amen, Same. amen. God bless you. Praise God. Remain standing in the presence of the Almighty God. We don't hold back on any single moment to give God praise. And I really want to thank the choir under the excellent leadership of our brother John. We come to praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to thank God for the testimonies that were given today. The reflection from our brother Alex and the excellent worship leading that has been done by Tristan and the team and the musicians and everybody that is here today. God is an awesome God. He is an awesome God. And just before I introduce the preacher, you see um, Chase and Bella. They are in the midst today. And um, we didn't know that you're coming. Let me tell you who they are. Chase is the grandson of uh, Dr. Douglas and Wanda Leroy. You know them very well. They were superintendents here before. And uh, his mother's is um, daughter. 
who was a youth when I was national youth. Come, come out here. Just come out here. Just remain standing, everybody. Both of you just come out here. Yeah. Come on, stand by me. So, this young man, as I've said, you know, um, his grandparents service as field director over here for many years. And now he is responding to the call to be a missionary. So that's why we planned the service for you. We didn't, we didn't really plan it, but you heard from our missionary Brown, and she has no doubt spoken into your life. And we know that God is here, um, both of them at Cambridge University to do some studies. And then they'll be going back in a month's time. And then he's at the Lee University, our university in Cleveland, Tennessee. And he's studying, and when he's graduated, he's going to be on the mission field. And um, Bella, what are you going to do? I'm hopefully going to be a youth pastor someday. She's going to be a youth pastor someday. So will you please just uh, remember to pray for them, and uh, God will bless you. Thank you, and we we'll look forward to fellowship with you later on. Give them a hand. Is uh, Dr. Kennell in the congregation today? Dr. Kennell, is he here? We heard that uh, he will be visiting us from Philadelphia, but he's not here. Without further ado, we have our blessed uh, Lord's blessing upon Mother Morrison. She will be bringing a word to us, and our time is far spent, but she will be led by the Lord to speak to us today. And it's good to see you both. I'll talk to you later. Come. So this is our beloved mother, Morrison. She's going to be ministering the word, and we give an opportunity for her to speak what God has laid upon her heart. Will you stretch your hand toward her? Father, in the name of Jesus, we lay a hand upon this, your daughter. She has been travailing in your word for the past few weeks and meditating upon what? You'd have her to say today. Now, Lord, I'm asking you, Lord of the harvest, take her into your divine embrace. Cloak her in the cloak of righteousness. Take away from her every nervousness today. And take her lips and her heart and help her to speak as the oracle of God. I pray in Jesus' name that you may give to us your people receptive hearts. And this wonderful spirit that is in this place today, I pray in Jesus' name that the praises of God will continue to go up and the Holy Ghost himself will reveal and manifest your power in this place. Bless her now and bless us as we hear the word. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. God's children said, Amen and Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Praise God. Let me first greet the Holy Spirit this morning, who by his mercies brought me here today. And I really mean it, brethren. I also wish to greet Bishop Brown and Reverend Millicent Brown in her absence. My brothers and sisters in Christ, visiting friends and also those who on the Zoom and YouTube platform. I thank my God for allowing me once again to be here this morning to share just a few words of encouragement that the Lord has laid on my heart. For quite some time, I do hope that at the end of this, someone will receive a blessing. My brothers and sisters, I always never take this opportunity lightly for me to be given such a privilege to stand in God's presence. Before his people. I believe it's only because. Of the grace of God. 
Why, hi, Elsie, honestly, hi, Elsie. And his love towards me. I give him praise. I worship him. Who else must I worship but the true and living God? The theme of the year, brethren, is Jesus said. But today, my topic, and this is a topic that the Lord has laid on me. As I go in it, you will hear. Be prepared. And as you heard, the sister have read. Now, how this came about, brethren, this topic. It's just during our devotion, my husband and I, in May last year. That's from when it came. Last year, May. Oh, yes. And the reading was from Daniel chapter 1. And the topic was preparing in advance. Having read the entire chapter, brethren, we began to look. Oh God, we started looking, my husband and I. What the word being prepared really means. And how this related to our everyday lives. That's the discussion we had. And being intentional about setting time to spend with God. That was the discussion we had. It was out of this devotion that God gave me this message. Right in the morning, the both of us, we looked at the life of Daniel in Daniel chapter 1. And how he and his three friends, we all know the story. Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. How they were taken in captivity in Babylon. King Neb Nebuchadnezzar was the king at the time. Oh, praise God. And King Nebuchadnezzar ordered one of his chief staff to bring to the palace some young men from royal and noble families from the Israelites' nation. They had to be strong. They had to be healthy. They had to be handsome, intelligent, and knowledgeable in every way. They were to be trained in the Babylonian culture. That means they must understand the culture. Like how we came from the West Indies. And we have to learn the British culture. King Nebuchadnezzar assigned these men to daily food and drink prepared at his table. Daniel asked if he could be exempt from partaking from eating at the king's table. Because the Israelites considered the food to be contaminated. Because the scripture told us that Nebuchadnezzar was a idol worshiper. Daniel refused to defile himself as he trusted and had faith in God. Brethren, the main thing about this when the both of us discussed this is Daniel's strength. Now, we know that he was exempt from eating at the table, but he was given the opportunity, opportunity rather, for he and his three friends to have vegetables only. And they had that for a period. But when he asked, before that, when he asked that he could be exempt, Oh, God. This chief said to him, how can I go to the king and tell him that? But the scripture told me that God had favor upon Daniel. And it was granted. So, 
Daniel didn't have to. So they were given the opportunity to eat the vegetables for a period. And it says in the scripture that after the time, those four men look better than all those who ate the rich and everything that is laid on the table. Now, we discussed it the morning, and we found out, as the scripture said, Daniel refused to defile himself as he trusted and had faith in his God. Now, brethren, where did you think Daniel's strength and purpose come from? God. His God. Daniel was a prayerful man and his heart for the mission ahead. Sorry, sorry. Daniel was a prayerful man and he prayed constantly to prepare himself and his heart for the mission ahead. That's Daniel chapter 1 verse 7. Due to Daniel's strength, strong relationship with God, through regular prayer and his belief in him. He knew his God and prepared for whatever the consequence would have been. Daniel was prepared to accept them because he knew his God would always deliver him. Praise God. He has been faithful. Daniel has always been faithful to God, and God showed faithfulness back to him. He has never been ashamed to hone his God. And whatever the circumstances, he has never refused. No, I don't want to talk too much about him because I want to go into the real thing. This is just what we were discussing in the morning for a devotion. So, brethren, this, I'm saying to the church today, this is the kind of faith that God wants us to have. Like Daniel did. Faith in God. Knowing that there's absolutely nothing that God cannot do. There is nothing you can ask of him that he cannot do. So, Brethren, as time went on, this topic remained in my mind. Although we finished that morning, several mornings, several days in the house, we sat and we talked about this. And one day, as I was reflecting, it came to me very strongly that I should do a reflection on the same topic, but not on the Zoom platform. Straight. I said, Lord, what are you saying? Not on the, bloom, the Zoom platform? So where should I do it? I said, if it's church, no, God, no. Same way. I said, if it's church, no. Because you have so many eloquent people that can do it. Who could you ask me to go and stand in church and say this? Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. I started to pray about this even more. Asking God, is it really what you want me to do? I kept on praying. And all I'm hearing, do the reflection. Plain. Have you ever heard God speak to you? Plain, plain, plain. I became very nervous, very, very nervous, because I'm saying I'm not good enough. I, I'm telling you, that's what I said. However, I started looking at various scripts, scriptures pertaining to the topic, and I've listed a few. Matthew chapter 3, Genesis 22, Genesis 6, John 13, 33. I read all this. I tell you, all of last year. All of last year, Matthew 1, 18. So now, brethren, that is, I'm just giving you 
a synopsis of what, how, what came out of our devotion that morning. But I'm going to go now into the deeper part of the topic, what Jesus meant, be prepared. When we look at the meaning of the word prepared, it means to make ready beforehand for something or for a purpose, a use or an activity. Ready beforehand. And I'm certain every one of us that are sitting here this morning, we have made some preparation before we come here. Every one of us was prepared to come here this morning. Everyone, from the greatest to the least. Now, as I said, I've been struggling with this from last year, from May last year. Now, when Bishop Brown informed us, the pastor's council's team, that he and Reverend Millicent intend to retire, immediately the topic came to me, be prepared, again. And I said, be prepared? Can you imagine, brethren, how we felt, all of us felt, in our hearts at the time when Bishop told us that? Because many of us, I personally wasn't looking to hear that. So, you can imagine. Ah, praise the Lord. And from that has been mentioned, brethren, there's a lot of preparation taking place. I believe with all my heart, when Bishop came and told us, he had as ready, prepared himself, all the preparation took place, he has discussed it with his wife and his family, and the time came, he was ready now to tell us. And when he told the church, he was ready. The topic is, be prepared. So they were prepared, praise God. I Let us look at two people in the Bible who were preparing for an occasion. We have Mer Mary and Joseph. That's where the scripture led me. Were preparing to get married. Before the wedding took place, Mary found expecting a child. We can imagine how Joseph was worried and thought, how could this be? Imagine you engaged to be married and all of a sudden you see your wife become pregnant. Must worry you. <sighs> Praise God. How would he take this, he said. In Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 25, if you read, the scripture say, He thought on these things, and an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream to reassure him, or to prepare him, that the baby which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So he used to take it easy, in my word, take it easy. And that, I believe, was preparing Joseph for what is to come. Praise God. Another example, Jesus also prepared himself for his own death on the cross. Do you remember that? Throughout his years on earth, he was in constant preparation, carrying the will of his Father in heaven who sent him. He preached, he healed the sick, he raised the dead, and he kept in constant communication with his Father through prayer. The scripture says he prayed for 40 days and 40 nights to prepare himself. So Jesus also 
prepare himself. Today, brethren, I want to bring to your attention the greatest preparation we all need to make this morning or today is preparing for the second coming of the Lord. No, there is no more preparation that we can make. Bishop, with all the preparation that you have made, or we are making, and our, our, our overseer is making, and Bishop Mullins is making, and we are making, there isn't one that is more important, brothers and sisters. Now, I told you I asked God, why didn't give me this? It shouldn't be me. But you know, a few days ago, my granddaughter came over the house and we were talking. And she said, Grandma, how are you so quiet them few days? But brother, brethren, from February came in. From the month of February came in. I am very particular in looking them after Mr. Hyvan House. I'm really, I really do. Believe me. And I didn't, uh, listen, I, I just ignore everything. There is. I just ignore everything. I just go out on a Friday to the supermarket and back. From the month of February, I've been looking into this as God is, was talking to me. I'm saying nothing is as important as preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ. In John chapter 13, verse 33, Jesus told his disciples that he will be leaving in a little while. I can imagine, oh God, that they didn't think it was possible as they would hear something like this and they started to question him. You know what came in my mind one day? I was thinking about it. When I, I was in the garden, when I thought about Bishop, the day when he told me, I prefer back to this. So I said, God, I can imagine how the disciples felt when Jesus told them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In John chapter 14, Jesus also told them, that he's going to prepare a place for them. Hallelujah. That is, and that is in advance. When Jesus told them that he was returning, he was actually referring to his second coming. His second coming. Praise God. In Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17, Paul reminds us that the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, and the dead first shall rise. We've heard that many times. We don't hear this a lot now. But in the future church, in the older church, oh my God. And I can remember from the unveil, a young girl, when they preach these messages, people ball in a church. Sinners come to the window and look. I can remember. But it seems as though we are so comfortable these days. God wants me to tell you, church, don't be too comfortable. Oh, God. He said, Then he which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Praise God. We read about it. We heard about it. The second coming of the Lord. And brethren, I mean, it's a whole here, this has been on my mind. 
I spoke to a number of my friends here in Brixton. I spoke to a number of my friends in other churches. I've, I never ever told them where it began. But I was encouraging them. Come on, brothers and sisters. Let us stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free. And we must not be entangled anymore. Praise God. Paul reminded the people also that the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly. For no one knows when he will take place. He will come like a thief in the night. For when they say it's peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them. Do you understand that, brethren? And one scripture said, if the house owner knew that the thief was coming, he would not suffer. Yes. I remember in ninth, early, about ninth in the early six, late 60s, Reverend um, Bishop Nelson, Pastor Nelson, was the minister of this church. And he told me one day, Sister Morrison, I'm coming to your house to pray with you. My husband was at, was gone to work. He was doing 10 to 6 the night. Be, and and Pastor pa, um, Nelson came at about 7.30. And myself and four children, he prayed until about quarter to nine. He left. And just after I, I closed the door, I was just putting on the chain. Those days, we have to put on the chain. I heard the door knock again. When I looked outside, it was Brother Josh Garden that died. Sister Pat Garden's husband came. And he said, Sister Morrison, I'm coming to pray with you. I said, Pastor, Pastor Nelson, just gone. He said, never mind. And he came in. I had started putting the children to bed, and I told him, he said, don't worry, you just come. We went in the living room, and we had a short prayer. And brethren, those days, I remember clearly, it was the first color television we bought. And after we went to bed, that night I thought, let's sleep in the bedroom next to the first, to the little girl. I used to take spell and sleep in their bedroom when he's not there. So that night it was next door. And it wasn't long after, I heard a knocking outside. Thief came into my house the very same night. And I won't go into it. But I'm saying, the scripture said, if the householder, if I knew and you know, when the thief is coming, you would prepare yourself. Praise God. Brethren, when Jesus returned back to earth after the rapture, the Christians are taken up in his presence. He will return to judge the earth. The heavens will roll up like a scroll and the stars will fall out of the sky. And he himself will illuminate it. First Thessalonians 4. So for us to be in the company of Jesus, we must pray constantly. We must live clean lives. Pray without ceasing, just as Daniel did. Just as Daniel did. Praise the Lord. The second coming will be a fearful and mournful time for the wicked. But it will be a day of peace for the righteous. So all of us who are here today, and we are connected to the vine, 
We are connected. We know we, Lord. We're not faking because you can't fake Jesus. We need to get it right. We cannot face fake him. We can't show him like how oh, you can show me outside and me can't see inside. Because he deals with in here. It's no use, brother, brethren. We come to church day after day. We say we see up for 70 years and 60 years and even two weeks. We cannot fool the Lord. And when he comes, he's looking for people who are faithful, who are righteous, who are ready. Praise God. So the days and times, Lord have mercy, what we need to do is to prepare ourselves for that day. Remember I said, nothing else is important. You know, I tell God many, many years, I said, God, nothing that you give me, I don't want to see it. I, I look after it because God gave it to me. I look after it to the best of my ability. But they are not standing before me. Hawks, my husband, hawk friends who I deal with, there is absolutely nothing that I have that I see. I don't worship it. I don't. Thank you, Jesus. Absolutely nothing. Because I'm leaving them here. And when Jesus comes, they are not important anymore. Brothers and sisters, do you want to be with Jesus? Do you want to be close to him? Every day? Then there are several things we must do. We must love one another. The Ten Commandments, but the greatest of all, we must love one another. Even those who have harmed us. Oh God, I'm sure 99 and three quarter percentage of us today, sitting in this church, can say somebody harm us. And despite how it is, and how hard it is, the Lord is saying, we must love them. However hard it is. We must live right. And put away evil doings. Evil doings. I don't have to go to it. Evil doings. Anything that is not good. Is evil. It doesn't matter how mine it is to us. It's evil. Praise God. Hallelujah. And worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Brethren. We all will be rewarded for such. All of us will be. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, it says, Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. Yes, every good thing that you have done. Mother Brown and all of the people. All of us, whatever we have done, we will be rewarded when Jesus comes. Reverend Sheila, the many days, and you know, you know, you will be rewarded. But you have to continue to be faithful. Because despite what you have done and what you are doing, oh my God, any day you start to take the praise, like how Nebuchadnezzar believed, say, he was the only king and there was no eternal. You will lose it, sister. You will lose out. Praise God. Hallelujah. How can we be, pre be prepared for the coming of Christ? And how can we be prepared in our everyday lives? One, we must take time. Hallelujah. To prepare, prepare ourselves for God daily and be intentional about not disturbing that time. Even if it is short, if it, even if it is a short while, sorry, just be consistent. That means 
If you say you're going to pray at 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever time, let it be intentional. Let it, don't let anything disturb it. No phone call. When we are praising God, when we set ourselves aside, that little moment should be unto him. We must be discerning of the times that we are living in. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when Christ will appear. Matthew 25, 13. We must, we, sorry, we must not lose hope. Do not get worry, weary in well-doing. Galatians 6, verse 9. We must encourage one another and don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. Hebrews 10, 25. The scripture said, wherever two or three are gathered, it's a good thing, brethren, for us to come together in fellowship. And that's why many people were so depressed when we weren't able to gather like this. This is what it means. And we must live like today is the day. Today is the day when Jesus is going to come. Con and we must continue to do the work that Jesus has left and asked us to do. Praise God. I am going to close off now, brethren. This is my little conclusion now. So that was the message for today. We are to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is sure. It is more certain than I get in my car and go home. It is more certain because we don't know. So in conclusion, brethren. Brethren, do you want to escape this judgment that is coming on planet Earth? Then let us all act right according to the word of God. Are you properly prepared for the second coming of Christ? What will that day be for you? When Jesus comes as a thief in the night. Will you be. You, sorry. Will you experience a day of disaster. And destruction. Or a day of delight. It will depend upon. If. You or myself. Are prepared for his coming. Let's hope. That all who are present here today will be ready because that's what Jesus comes for. He doesn't want any of us, whether you save two weeks or whatever time, to lose out. He wants to see every one of us. He said he's gone to prepare a mansion for every one of us. But for us to get there, okay. Will you experience a day of disaster or destruction or a day of delight? It all depends upon if you are prepared for his coming. Praise God. Let us live right. Ah, oh God. Ah, oh Jesus. We have already been repented. Bridging, I'm coming down now. And accepted Jesus. This is a decision that we must make before Jesus returns. Let us be ready, brothers and sisters, when he returns. If not, it will be too late. This is a choice we cannot put off. We must be fully prepared and ready for the second coming of Jesus. This is my little testimony, brethren. Brothers and sisters, I mean to serve the Lord. Despite of what it takes, I want to be with Jesus in glory to live forever. I trust in my God and I know he will see me through. 
Praise be to God. Oh, praise God. I pray that all of us here today who are members of the Brixton NTC Church will all be ready when Jesus returns. Thank you. Praise the name of the Lord. What a timely word from our Mother Morrison. Thank you for that word. And we have received it in the name of Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that although we're late, you didn't rush and cut it short. That one has been inside of you for over 10 months. And you've delivered today. I'm going to ask worship leaders to come. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. I'm going to ask the deacons to come forward and get the altar table ready. And we're going straight into communion without much ado. We'll be finishing about... 10, 20 minutes. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Can I have the table, the altar table? Please get up, gentlemen, and come. And have the table ready. Praise to God. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. So we come 
to the Lord's table today to observe communion, to break bread and share the wine signifying the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come to do it together today. And of course, you know that this is a highest sacrament within the Christian church where we can take these emblems signifying the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ and the cup and drink signifying our unity with him. It is for those who are born again and those who have confessed Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. So as you, the sacraments are served, if you are not profession Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you may just abstain and God will bless you. Praise me to the name of the Lord. Jesus said, as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And do this in remembrance of me. Remember that he died for you. Remember that he rose again from the dead. Remember that he ascended to heaven, but more than all, as we heard from our preacher this morning, remember that he's coming back again. And what kind of a people should we be? A people that is prepared and ready. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, For I have received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Praise be to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the privilege the opportunity that we have to come before your presence today, gathered around your word, and gathered around this altar, Lord God, to break bread and to share with one another, signifying your death and resurrection, and that you're coming again. Bless these emblems, we beseech you, as we partake, O oh God, let our bodies be healed, let our spirit be renewed, let our minds be refreshed, and help that our hearts and our minds will be turned towards you, the living God. And every one of your children that participate, let them be blessed and let them be strengthened. These mercies and blessings we ask you now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and God's children said, Amen. Just before we send the service out to you, you might just want to turn around and Greet your brothers and sisters and offer to them the hand of peace. Forgive one another and be restored. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Please go and share and receive the emblems. And when you receive them, please wait for us and we'll give you instructions.
remove the plastic from the cup and the lid. Retrieve the bread. The 
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. Eat all of it and feast upon him in your hearts. Eat all of it. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ which was shed for you. Drink all of it and feast upon him in your hearts. Drink all of it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless. thank you for all that you have done on Calvary for us. Thank you for your shed blood. We hear the prophet Isaiah speaking. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
the chastisement for our peace was upon him and by his stripes we're healed thank you for your saving power thank you for your healing power thank you for your keeping power and to you we give all the glory to you we give all the praise in and through the mighty name of Jesus and all of God's children said, amen. amen and amen. Remain in the presence of the Lord for a few more moments. And we're sorry to keep you late. It's very late today. But let me just recognize then you and Natalie. They are here today. A couple of years ago they were married and it's good to see you in the house. Brother Bent and Sister Bent, we recognize you today. We have not seen you a long time. God bless you for all that he's doing in your life. Amen. Can we just receive Sister uh, Judith with all of our announcements? And let me just say while she's coming, next week Sunday will be Mother and Sunday. And we will be um, praying for our mothers very especially. There will be five mothers that will be um, commissioned to serve you and to serve the church. We have a growing number of people who are new to the faith and are new to the church and will need uh, the support of mothers that we will be commissioning next week Sunday. We have some serving already. Two or three more will be joining them to serve the church. And of course, there are some other offices that we will need to confirm, but we'll just talk to you about that next week and God bless you. Good afternoon. So we will go ahead with the announcement for the coming week. So prayer and fasting will continue on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Bible study will be on Wednesday on um, Zoom, and that will start at 7.30 prompt. Single adult ministry is every third Friday of the month. The next heating hub will be on the 8th of March and the doors open at 11 a.m. Light refreshment, lunch, um, and socialization is available to all that attend. On the first Monday of the month is Youth Matters, and that starts at 7 p.m. and is held in the Family Heritage Center upstairs. On the Fourth and the 11th of March is discipleship class, and that is also held upstairs. Our Bishop Brown and our Reverend Millicent um, is having a conversation with the youth on this on Sunday, the 17th of March, and that starts immediately after church. Lunch will be provided for you, and that starts at 1.30-ish. Um, the ladies, Brixton, um, are hosting a prayer breakfast, um, and tickets are available to all who wish to attend, and that's on Saturday, the 16th of March. So, as you know, we are celebrating the legacy of our Bishop Brown and our First Lady, Sister Millicent, um, in April, after 49 years in ministry. The um, meal on the 6th of April, um, venue and everything has been confirmed. It's fully booked out. There are no more tickets. So... Those that haven't got tickets and those who have got tickets can join us on celebration on this Sunday the 7th. Um, and that service of celebration starts at 10.30 um, again, prompt. So... We've got um, a, an arrangement, um, an invitation to um, join um, on a day trip to um, the Isles of Wight, and that is scheduled for the 5th of August 
Our sister Barbara is the organiser, so if you wish to attend, can you please leave your name at the information desk at the back of church? Details are also available, um, so please um, ensure that you put your name down early so that you can get yourself a seat. So, so we've got um, on the 30th of March, our sister Mavita and others are hosting a gospel concert, and that's at NTCG Deptford. Um, there's a special arrangement for um, us here at Brixton, and tickets are going to be um, at a discount. But if you um, want, Sister Sheila will be at the back of church, and you can purchase your ticket from her. Um, if you want to pay a little bit more, feel free to do so. There's a QR code, and you can scan that. So... Our Reverend, uh, sorry, Reverend, our Brother Parks remembered our families that are bereaved, those that are sick and housebound, um, was all called in prayer. But each and every one of us remember and call them all by name. Our Mother Edwards is also requesting prayer of healing, so please call her name also in your prayers. So we've got birthday celebration. So on the 1st of March, we had Darnell Cummins and Sister Josette um, Beckeran um, birthday. Today, um, Pauline Richards, um, Tisha Thomas celebrate their birthday. On the 4th, um, tomorrow, uh, Marlene Clark and our um, brother Paul Numbard celebrate birthday. On the 5th of uh, March, Renee Petkin um, celebrate um, her birthday. So let's give them all a hand. I've got a card to read before um, we end. And it's a card to say, just for you, to say thank you. Thank you very much to the church members from our Mother Black. And it reads, for we are God masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So thank you from Mother Black. And in closing, invite a friend to church, share the blessing. Thank you very much. Don't turn, okay, you're putting it back on now. Thanks very much. So God bless you, everyone. May you have a great week. We're in uh, the book of Nehemiah uh, for our Bible studies, and the study is already prepared. It's going to be a great time. We had 50 of you online last week. We want to have more of you. You'll learn so much in your Christian life and how you progress as a disciple of Christ. So join me and Lady Brown as we teach uh, from the book of Nehemiah. Please read it. And God will bless you. As I said, we'll be having this commissioning service next week, Sunday, um, confirming some people who are in office and some are coming in new music, worship lead, protocol, 
save God, the whole range. We're just doing everybody in one go. Time is running out on me. And if I don't do it, then I don't want any confusion when I'm gone. Somebody shout hallelujah. I don't want no confusion. I don't want no mess. I'm sorting things out. So you'll get a letter from the church uh, secretary. And you'll please be ready. And we're going to have a wonderful time on Mothering Sunday. Amen? You still love me? I love you, but Jesus loves you best. Please stand. Let us give him thanks. Sorry for keeping you late today, but the service was rich, wasn't it? Yes. Was the service a rich service? Yes. And by the way, I don't think this is online now, but when the camera, look around you, just turn around and look. It looks like it's a full house, isn't it? But when the camera comes on you, there's so many empty spaces, it looks as though there's nobody in the house. So I'm going to ask you in future, just try to sit a bit closer as much as possible so that the empty seats can be at the back where the camera can't reach. <laughs> All right, and God will bless you. Just lift up your hand to the Lord. Lord, we thank you once again for all of your blessings. Thank you for your awesome presence in this house. And for every person that came with a need and father were not able to express those needs i pray in jesus name right now that you may touch them and minister to their needs very especially we lift up before you sister joan hemingham she goes in for major surgery this week and lord without you she'll not be able to make it but i pray in jesus name that you will be with her choose the surgeons very carefully and those who will attend to her after care we pray in jesus name that you'll also select them and bring her safely through those surgeries with a testimony of praise to your mighty name. And as we go now, we pray your presence will go with us and the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep our hearts and our minds fixed upon you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be honor, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forevermore. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you, and have a wonderful week, and see you next week. Amen.